Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Gonna do some printer maintenance. These babies been run hard. Like, I haven't cleaned them in a little while. Started neglecting them a little bit when I got the H series printers, but it's time to give these babies an upgrade too. Got the, uh, no, I think I'm saying this right, Martillo Tech Chamber Heaters, the active bed chamber heater thingies. Anyways, so that's what I'm gonna put in today too. We're gonna clean these up, put these in, and that kind of will bring them up to the same level as like the H series. It'll you know, less warping with PETG and ABS and ABS. I hammer the ABS out all the time, so got to get these installed. So let's get these unpacked, have a look at what they look like, then we'll clean these up, and then we'll go and run these things into the ground some more. Okay, guys, this thing looks pretty awesome. I'm not sure exactly what material it's made out of. I'll kind of review the paperwork and tell you that after. It's got a little... Like box for your uh, carbon. It's got two like uh, HEPA filters in it. It says they're like E11. I had to look that up because I don't know. I have ventilation on my machines, so normally I just pump her outside, and that's so much better for the environment, as we all know. Just pump it outside, and then it disappears. Anyway, so you got all the screws, the installation information. I just want to get to it, guys. You got temp sensor here. It looks like good quality stuff down in there. Look at the switches, and just looks like everything's good. It was well thought out, so let's get this thing installed and get some printing done. First thing you do, of course, turn the printer on. Then you want to home your axis because you got to lower the bed, so we won't put you through the pain of that, but it's homing. So then you got to lower the bed all the way down. That's step one, they tell you. So let's lower down until she squeaks. Come on, baby. Get down there. There you go. Then you got to power it off at the back, turn the switch off, take the cord, unplug it. So then you got to run the power cord through this slot right here and you got to take the back off. So for the sake of video, I'll speed this part up. Okay, now they tell you just slide the wire in up here. So I'm going to tell you why. It's not going to be that simple to slide that wire in there in just a second. You're going to need maybe a little pokey tool. I don't know what to call those things. Maybe a set of needle nose pliers. You'll see why in just a second. And maybe me and three other men can get this wire through there. Okay, guys. So getting that wire through there is a struggle. I learned uh, if you throw a little grease from just grab it off here onto the wire, it actually will slide through better. So let's, let's move to the next step now. Okay guys, getting that wire through is kind of tricky. Put a little bit of grease on it from your shaft, like I say. Once you get it through guys, they want you to take these screws out along here. I'll put pictures like somewhere here or something. Anyways, you'll see it. And then what you're gonna wanna do is push the fan back and that's so you can get the wire down around and feed it nicely over so you can get to the control board. So I'm gonna do that now. So pull the fan a little bit over just so it's loose a little bit. Shove that wire down through. I mean, you could probably do it without doing all those other little steps of, but it puts less force on it if you just loosen them. I mean, I'm not the type of guy that likes taking all the screws out of stuff for no reason, but at the same time, if it has a purpose, why not? So now that you got your wire through here, just kind of try to fit her through these little hoops here for these wires. That'll keep it tucked up nice. That's kind of the idea behind it anyways. It's gonna take me a second to get them through. I'll do that and we'll be right back. Okay, now that you got your wire run through those hoops and down around the fan, I leave this little bit of excess right here just for now. We'll get back to that in a minute. Now that we've got that done, we got the trash chute out. We could put these screws back in, but I'll wait and do that all at once. Now I'm gonna remove these ones. So remove your uh, lid, set it aside. Then you're gonna want to get in here and you're gonna have to connect your wire so the blue one goes first the brown one goes second so let's do the blue one first we'll get that tucked in there first and I will put that a little slight bend on it not a lot because you don't want to break it off it's really nice so I'm gonna back that up just a little bit more I'm using a pretty low-end screwdriver here don't do that I just didn't feel like walking in the cold to get one. So now that I've got that one in there and that's snug as hell, I'm gonna inspect, see what I think. All right, let's do the second one down. 
Get that backed out real good. Same spot. Yep. All right, so then you're gonna slide your brown wire in. Put that in there and snug that up. Make sure they're in place good, guys, and make sure you snug them up nicely. Don't break this off, it's right on your board. Tighten it, but don't over tighten it. So then what you're gonna to wanna to do, guys, once you get that on there, just kind of look everything over, make sure it's in place. I'm just gonna check it with my light here, see if I like it, I do like it. And then you're gonna to wanna to take, and uh, well, I always check everything twice, I just have to. It's just part of what I am. All right, then all you're gonna to wanna to do is pop this lid back shut. That way it's protected. Then you're gonna reinstall your front plate all that and get this tucked in so we'll time lapse that now it's time guys for me to put all the screws back in throw the chat trash chute back in and uh yeah get this thing going so then in order to hook the actual heater down you got to take the side cover off where this is an x1 you're going to take these four screws out there's two in here that run this way into the side then you're going to come around the front Pull these two tabs back. There's one here and one here. And then there's two screws kind of angled in there. And then you can pull the side off. So I'm going to try to attempt that now. I haven't tried it yet, but I got all the screws out. Let's see if it comes off. And it does, just like that. So there you go, guys. So now I'm going to try and put the screw in because you need something to kind of mount that heater over so it isn't falling off while we're printing. We don't want that. We want to make it better, not worse. In the supplied package, you got, I think you can see that if you can't. Um, it's the one with the two nuts and the screw. So you're going to want to put that through up here. I'll move the camera so you can see what we're doing. So they're Phillips screws. You're going to want to throw that in there, kind of stick it in through there. And then we'll move the camera to show you where the nut goes. So I'm going to attempt to do this with a nut driver. Just my trusty little RC tools. And we'll see if we can get her on there. want to make sure it's going on. All right, just a second here. I got my screwdriver in here. We'll see if we can get this thing to kind of go on there and tighten up. I don't think I can. I think it might be going. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now we got it. I want to make sure that's snug as a bug because I do not want this thing moving. Now, let's see what we think. I don't think that's going anywhere. I think that, uh, you know, you could put a piece of sticky tape down here if you wanted, but I think that'd be overkill. So let's get the side stuck back on this thing. Okay, going to stick the side on here. Start that process. I think it just sits there. Yeah, it does. And I'll start sticking some screws back in this thing. So that's it guys, all installed. Um, we'll test it, I'm gonna put the printer back together, clean it here, but uh, let's, let's turn it on. I don't wanna wait for that, I guess. So, you know, plug in your cord, turn on the switch. You got a little switch here on the side of the heater. So, and then there's a little button right up there, and there's another one here. I'll get into learning how to adjust temps soon. It's throwing heat. Real nice heat. That's going to be super helpful inside the X1C. All right, let's put in the uh, coconut acid-free, whatever that says. And we'll turn this off for now. So you pull out this little drawer right here. As you can hear, the old fan kicks right into overdrive. Then you got to put the contents of this black bag that's in the package into this box. Now for me, I'd drop that everywhere. So I'm going to grab a funnel. So I'm going to try and not spill this. We'll see what happens here. The contents look like little beads of charcoal. As you can hear, the fan just kicked out on... Oh, oh, I might have put too much. Let's shake her. No, I didn't put too much. I think they could be enough to fill it a couple times, though. Because right now it's full, and I have lots left. Well, not lots, but enough to probably do it again. I don't know if they want you to fill that clear to the brim. But I know if I do that, <laughs> I'm going to be picking it up off the floor. So I'm going to stick this back in now. Make sure that's popped in good. Let's put that back in. Boom. HEPA filters are all clicked in. I'm going to click the bottom of that one in a little bit better. Looks like we have everything installed. Let's get this thing cleaned up. Now it's time to install the uh, chamber heater. 
into the what I call blue X1C. Uh, and I'm not going to make you guys watch that. You just watch that with the green one. So we're just going to go ahead and do it. And then as soon as I'm done that, we'll set them together. And then we're going to learn about setting them up. But I think in this video, we might just stick to the installation because it's kind of dragging on. So guys, earlier in the video, I was struggling to put this wire through, trying to think of better techniques and everything. And then at the end, they say, hey, take off the side so you can put the bolt in. Here's the thing. If you got the side off, you can easily slide the wire through. So I'd say, take the side off in the first steps. Then your life will get a lot easier. Okay, guys. Um, been doing a little test here, seeing what they heat up. I put them on a, a 45. I'm just learning about the positioning of the switch, which is the little blue button you see there, kind of. I think we can zoom in on it a little bit. Maybe right there. Hard to see, kind of, but the little blue button right there. You turn that. There's three different positions. One's for 40, one's for 45, and one's for 60. And I got it on the 45 because that's kind of like the average I'd be using anyways. And this is a cold room. And we've been testing this on manual mode because there's two positions, auto and manual. And we're finding that it's holding 45 degrees for a joke. It's actually heating the whole room, which is nice because I don't run heaters in this room because you never know how hot it's going to get because of the printers. So, uh... I wanted to show you kind of the status lights there. You see the white status light up there? The one right at the bottom? I just messed it all up. You see it. There's one in the middle, red, and then there's yellow. Now, the yellow one, it says it's detecting a print. You know, that's bull. Anyways, the, the second one down is red. That tells you the heater's on. And the white one just tells you the power's on. This thing's got, like, uh, infrared sensors in it, all kinds of cool stuff. That And I've tested the... Uh, Automatic mode, it does kick out at the temperatures. Um, I honestly couldn't figure out why it was kicking out, and then I realized I had it in auto mode, but now I've got that kind of figured out. So let's uh, roll you back here and let you look at the gauges on the uh, dashboard of the printer and show you what it looks like for temps. Okay, guys, this is the, uh, what I call my blue printer. I wonder why. Anyways, so uh, as you can see, holding 45 degrees. The heat bed's 55. I mean, that's pretty warm and it's not even on and the nozzle extruder and extruder are 57 and uh it's holding temps pretty good let's look at the other one this one's doing the same i call this one the green printer see if you can figure out why but anyways so uh heat bed's 55 and that you know that's the temp it, you know it gets to for printing pla when i print pla anyways uh the chamber's 45 Nozzle and extruder's 58. It's actually a little warmer than the other one, but this one's got the BIQU silicone diaper in the bottom, which we had to cut for it to fit with this heater, just so you know. So if, if you got one of those, realize you're going to have to cut it if you want to install this heater or just throw it away. Anyway, so uh, no fans are on. I can't wait to do some test prints on this, guys. Let me just roll you back out here. Okay, guys, in closing this video, I... This was an installation video of the Martillo chamber heaters and purifier, air purifier. We'll see how that works. I mean, it seems like the ventilation will work better. I'm not downplaying any way you can clear your air up. It's just, it's not sealed here or anywhere, really. So I don't know how it's going to purify the air. We'll see. Um, it can't hurt, that's for sure. We got a charcoal filter in there and two HEPA filters in each one. That should help a little bit, maybe? We'll see. I don't have one of those air quality tester things here. I know the air quality is probably as good as New York doing rush hour when I'm in here printing, so it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, stay tuned, guys. I'll be doing lots of videos with these things. I know they're kind of retro compared to the H series now, but they're still very awesome printers. And they're just as fast. The only thing they were lacking in was the fact that they didn't have heat in the chamber. And sometimes, you know, if you weren't paying attention or watching what you were doing, or if it dropped to minus 600 here where I live, then you would maybe get a warp print or maybe I'd suck too much heat out with the ventilation. Because if I crank that baby up, she'll freeze you right out. But uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Follow along. You want to see more about these? You're going to have to check the next video. Plus, I'm going to be posting way more content. I've been doing a lot of new stuff. Go check out my files over on Celts 3D. If you're into square bodies and OBS projects, you're going to love it. All right, guys. Subscribe. Go check out my socials. Have a good day.